Shalom Chabarim, Shalom Rastafari Chabarim, Shalom to our others as well. We say it in grace, but especially to I and I, brethren and sisters, and those of the Beta Rastafari and the Beta Israel. Yes, I. We, the Royal Order of Ethiopian Hebrews, and he after the Order of Melchizedek. So let's discuss this right here is rape. This is the big question, seem to be in, or the, the controversy, controversy in the so called black conscious community and on the so called internet streets concerning rape and the Bible. Some say that, well, you know, the Bible justifies rape. It's like when they say the Bible justifies slavery. And we prove that the word slavery is not in the Bible and really has come from a European thing, a Slav, Slav. There was a group of European white people, Slav. They're descendants of the Canaanitish people, right? Because a white man truly is really the Canaanite in the Bible. A lot of confusion out there. They want to say, well, actually the Hebrews are the Canaanites in Israel. A lot of confusion. So here, 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 let's touch on this. This might be a series right here, um, topical series on just some themes right here. Give thanks to I and I brothers, you know, iron sharpeneth iron, you know, that say, hey, bro, <laughs> don't ramble. So let's get right in it. Is rape in the Bible? Is rape in the Bible? Yes, rape is in the Bible. The good, the bad, and the ugly is found in the Bible, in the scripture. Right, because it's a real book, it's a real Torah direction instruction. Right, it's a real direction instruction from the real power. Ha Elohim, Chaylehim, from the power Ha El, Chayel, He who be who he be, Ha Kadosh, Baruch Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name. So, rape in the Bible. Now, First, they say something like that. They say, oh, well, rape is in the Bible. And then they sometimes either say that or they'll say that the Bible justifies rape. In other words, it's like saying that the Bible says okay to rape. Right? It's okay to rape. No, that's a lie. That, that's a lie. That's a chazab. We say chazab or kazab. Kazab. That's Cosby. That's Cosby. Right? That's sheker. That's sheker. That's a lie. It's a lie. Now, there's some scripture, actually, that ones and ones, you know, struggling over the English. And I, I give thanks ones finally picked up that message that we have said over 10 years ago. That a lot of the Hebrews, just come Hebrews and Israelites and certain other ones and ones and even ones who've been Hebrews and Israelites for a longer time are doing more study, right? Using like the Blue Letter Bible and the other interlineal Bible softwares and they'll pick out a word right there but not be able to really read or understand the verse in the context. It's like we take something written in English, right, and say we didn't understand that what was written in English and then we just take like say one word. Now the context of that word is very very important but to the point of rape in the Bible. Is rape in the Bible, that's one question, and then does the Bible, the scripture, or one may say the Hebrew Torah, the old, what's called the Old Testament, some refer to it as the Tanakh, but it's not truly the Tanakh, it's the, it's the Brit, Brit Yeshana. It's called the Brit Yeshana, right? Or corresponding to the Old Testament, quote, end quote, right? The Hebrew, the Hebrew Bible, right? So rape in the Bible, yes, rape is in the Bible, right? Or in the Torah. Specifically now looking at the five books of Moshe, the five books of Moses, Robeinu. Yes, rape is in Ha-Torah. It's in the direction instruction. People say, well, why is it in the Bible? Well, it's in the Bible as an object lesson. It's in the Bible as an object lesson. It's in the Bible as a case, one of the, the, the case study. We call it case study. But according to the law, even the law of Moshe, of Moses, according to Ha-Torah, Rape is punishable by death. Rape is punishable by death. So the Bible does not justify, like make right or righteous is okay because it's in the Bible. So therefore, no, in the Bible we have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Even especially among Jah's chosen people, especially amongst Yisrael. Right is is a learning book. So helping man, humanity, generally speaking, specifically the B'nai Yisrael, the sons of Israel and the Israelites, right, to grow in grace and that knowledge, especially that knowledge of Robeinu, Eshua Hamoshia, I and I, Rabbi, 
Rabbi Yeshua, the Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I guess some of the Old Testament only Hebrews will know, oh, oh, is he messianic? We're going to get into that as well. But here, 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 let's take what Rav Shaul, Rabbi Saul, a.k.a. better known as the apostle, Gentile, the apostle to the Gentiles, Brother Paul, what he says here in his advice to his Talmud, Talmud, his disciple, Talmud, disciple, the word Talmud is an operative word and means teaching and we can find it in the Torah as well for teaching give us the teaching of his divine magic give us the teaching the true teaching right give us the the good news the true teaching the truth in 2nd Timothy 2 15 it says study to shew thyself approved to Elohim a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth see this is a, another good example here where it says dividing we also have a Hebrew reference for the for the new the new covenant, you know, scripture, the Brit Hadasha. When it says the word dividing, it's explaining. So we're using this still right here because saying, there's a lot of sayings out there. He say and she say and hear say. So you hear say whether he say or she say. You know, there's a lot of hearsay and she say out there, right? Such as rape is in the Bible. Well, that is true, right? Rape is in the Bible. But then they go on, they add to that and say, well, the Bible justifies or supports or even going even further to say like it encourages that because some, some foolish, right, among job people, right, some, some, some Rasha, ratchet, some defiant ones, some Rasha, right, amongst job people because they will do what even the Old Testament Israelites even did to get them and even us in this situation that we are today. Right? We're gonna dress the black conscious as the black conscious Ahab and 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 Jezebel. <laughs> you know, that was a good a good point brought up right there. You know, we'll we'll address that a little bit later on. But just to stick with this right here, because not you know it's not about personality, it's about principle principle over personality so even if ones that we might not agree with say something that is correct right and accurate we like to acknowledge the truth right dividing what does dividing the word of truth mean it means explaining the word of truth here a little there a little because there's many sayings that have developed or devil 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 up right devil up throughout the years by a variety of um, people means scripture Right, um, supports the purposes of, right, and some of the sayings while contradicting others. Mm -mm. All right, so right here, 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 that Canaanite talk, we're hearing some of the, the, the Ahab and, and his wife, you know, um, reasonment, you know, going on in the background and everything. Others are listening to in the next, um, in the next bait, in the next room, you know. Right, but anyway, right here, 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 dividing, explaining the word of truth. So let's just go here, just briefly, right here. Right, let's go right here. Okay, so here, right here, let's bring this up right here. Let's bring this up right here. Okay, so chapter 22, right? We heard ones mention this recently, just, just a couple of maybe minutes ago, and we say, okay, let's address this one right here. Here it says, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, who is not betrothed. We don't say witch, because there's a lot of witches, but we don't say witch, right? That is not betrothed. Like, we don't say unto, you know, unto means not to. And lay hold on her. The gift of the Holy Spirit has shown us that, right? And lie with her, and they be found. Then it says, then, then the man that lay with her shall give to the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he hath humbled her he may not put her away all his all his days now here this is the second time that this one is mentioned this sort of a situation is mentioned a man should not take his father's wife neither discover his father's skirt because the father's nakedness is his wife so that explains the whole um noah the noah incident Right, scripture explaining scripture where it says that that Ham, that Ham Kam saw the nakedness of his of his father, right? The nakedness of his father, that's the that's the wife, the Isha. Right? Now that's a related point there, but since we just 
touch on this verse right here, let's go to this verse right here. The verse that the main verse in our site. Deuteronomy 22, 28. I'm gonna try to be brief right here, 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 right? But first thing is rape in the Bible, yes. But this particular verse is not the verse is is not the rape verse. Mm -hmm. This is not the rape verse. We should also find the area where it says if her father if her father refuse right if a father refuse right lay hold because the lay hold once we're going into the word lay hold if a father refuse right right if a father refuse let's go right here father and see if this is this is the if we can find this right here if a father refuse okay searching searching right if a father refuse right right here right boom so that one right there is related to this because it's about three case study, three points of um, unauthorized sexual, you could say, contact, contact between um, forbidden or questionable persons, right? Ones that do not have that permission for, for you could say, sexual contact, you know? Here in Exodus and Shemot 22 and 17 says, if her father utterly refused to give her to him, so the father... Right, we're looking at this in the context of his time as well. If the father refused, right, and the bigger context right here is right here. Let's let, let's bring out this verse right here so we can get the the bigger context right here. Okay, our our phone right here is a little slow. Okay, let's go right here. Right, so let's go right here. Okay, if okay, boom, right here. So a, if a man and he's a maid. That is not betrothed. Now, the maid doesn't mean like a maid, like somebody have a maid in their house. Tomorrow, a maiden. Because remember, a lot of things get lost in translation. And if a man entice, like seduce, entice a maid that is not betrothed, that's not engaged to be married, and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. He must endow her. In other words, give that 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 dowry, right? That dowry, mahar, mahar. Now, someone say, oh, the woman was born or so forth and so on. No, it was to prove that you had the, the wherewithal, you know what I mean? To take care of your woman and your child, right? Or children, right? So the word could in a general sense mean that, right? But you would give a certain amount of money, right? To basically prove Right, it's not like today. One will see a, a woman, and, and you like her, and she like you, and you can, you know, do a thing, right? And then afterwards, it's like, oh, 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 I'm pregnant, or I'm with child, oh, well, well, you know, what we're gonna do, and and you know, it becomes a crazy confusion that we have today. There's a proverb that says, first, you know, first, like, you know, build your house, you know, you know, prepare, you know, yourself, build your house, find a field, work it out, begin to become productive. Right. And then seek a wife and then seek a woman. But today, because of, you know, this uh, 400 plus year captivity and uh, how to make a slave, Willie Lynch isms and schisms because the isms. Right. Everything is backward. Right. To the more better word for it is to obtain an exchange. So we're looking at the top definition here, which is the BDB. But then going down to the strong, the strong is a very good point of reference. Right. Um, readiness. See the idea of readiness in assent. Assent means like you agree and you're ready. You know, like somebody said, let's go into business and you, and you don't got the money or the wherewithal or the time. So you can't really assent. You can't put your part of the funds into that investment. Right. And then they have the other translation to bargain, to wed. You see, wherever it's italicized, it kind of shows in the English where the translator has opted to use this English word to express that. You also see where it says wed, wed, right? But this is connected with the other one. This one where it says, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, that's not engaged to be married, a young maritable age woman, and lie with her. Now, people say, well, well, couldn't that be that he raped her, right? The woman, right, had not just the right, but also the responsibility to do everything in her power to resist that. That means if it was to hurt the man, if it's to scream out, call out, so forth and so on. This is why it puts the case study if a woman is in the field or if a woman is in the city or it depends on where this, this, this sexual contact happens, right? But if he did that, 
right? It wasn't like he can just, you know, um, you know, they say get a piece, so to speak, and then he go about his business. It's almost like if you broke it, you owned it in that sense. Now, of course, for the feminists and people who are into the sexism, the ism, the schism, that's a whole other reason, man. We'll address that when ones come forward to address that. But here it says, if her father utterly refused to give her to him. Now, it's not just today that good fathers really love their daughters. You know, when I say love their daughters, will protect their daughters, like men who would do things to other people's daughters. And a lot of man, man, a lot of you mind know this, that before you had daughters yourself, you know, you probably did things with other men's daughters. You know what I mean? When you was young and wild and, 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 and your oats and all of that. And now that you get a little bit, um, you know, older and now you have your, your daughter. I've heard of even men say like, yo, I would kill the man. I'm, I'm overly protective. Oh, since I had a daughter, I'm really, you know, turned up about because you're thinking about it could be guilty conscience that you're thinking about as well. Because you know what you did. I mean, you and now you're going to be more protective. So the idea here is that the Hebrews were very protective of their, the Hebrew mind them or the Israelite men of their daughters. So the father has rights as well to utterly refuse to give her to him. And no doubt it's because of the communication of the daughter, right? If you really know his daughter, really love his daughter, his daughter might say that, oh, she might not want to, even though they already had, in a sense, a consensual sexual contact, you know, and the father could refuse, but he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. He still would have to do what? pay money according to the dowry that means a payment of virgin you ever wonder why it says thou should not suffer a witch right kashaf kashaf to practice witchcraft or sorcery witchcraft or sor sorcery you ever wonder why sometimes some direction instructions some torot are next to other torot right because it could be also that in some cases it could be the woman that might be up to something that is not good, right? This is why it's put right there. But here, 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 this goes with the verse that we started out with in um, Deuteronomy, I think, chapter 22. Let's just hit the commentary right here, right? Seduction of a girl who belonged to her father. In other words, she still was under her father's care and her father's authority, right? Under the righteous and the Hebrew patriarchy, right? Who belonged to her father as long as she was not betrothed. Right? In other words, he was of her father's house. And family in the Hebrew is known as Beit Ab. Beit Ab, Beit Ab, the house of the father. So another question can be, is family really scripturally only truly qualified when there is a father? Whether the father is there, you know, in person, in flesh, and in honor, or whether the father's name is there, because the father might have passed away, but he has a good name, he was a good man, and therefore the father is still there in principle, right? Was also to be regarded as an attack upon the family possession. Now, a lot of these, you know, these commentaries are written from the European perspective. Family possession. Um, not like possession in the Western Gentile sense, like a thing, so forth and so on, but somebody who, that's my sister. I want to say, that's my sister. I'm saying that, in a sense, I, when I say possess her, she is part of what is important to me and who is important to me. Whoever persuaded the girl to let him lie with her was to obtain, right, the idea of persuade. I want you to keep that in mind. Persuaded a girl, right, to let him lie with her and obtain was to obtain her for a Isha, Eshet, or Oset, by the payment of a dowry, which you call the Mahar. And if her father refused to give her to him, he was to weigh, to pay, to weigh and to pay the silver, the Kesef, money equivalent to the dowry of maidens, to pay the father just as much for the disgrace. He's to pay for the disgrace, right, brought upon him by the seduction of his daughter. Right, as Ayawata, as maidens would receive, maidens, those marriageable age women, there's two words for like so called virgin in a sense. There's the Betula and the Alma, right? The maidens would receive for a dowry upon their marriage. The seduction of a girl, a girl who's of marriageable age. Now, 
there's some things that we have to recognize according to the ancient customs, you know, like the ages, people go into the ages and say that, oh, well, it was right back then, it's right now. We can prove in the scripture where we upgrade those ages according to the time that we are in, because a lot of things are according to the predilections, the customs of the society and of the world back then. So let's not be hypocrites when we look at the Hebrews and we look at ancient Egypt. A lot of women were married young and a lot of times the man that they married was maybe a couple of years older than them. Like if a girl was 13, the boy might have been 15 or 16 or if the girl 16, the boy might have been 17, 18 or somewhere around there. It was it was close to the same age and because of this culture of the society they were mature. It's not like today where you have a, a, a 15 year old or a 13 year old, right? Compared with the ancient world, it was different because it was a different, you know, way of life. I say way of life, you know, like we have, it's, it's a whole different society. It's a whole different world, you know, today, right? You know, in fact, it seems like people mature it, it, like like asymmetrically here nowadays they, they're mature in some things all the slick ass things right but they're not mature in the real things while people are mature in the real things because of how it was to survive in the world of yesterday that which depended on people to do now we can depend on government on system on you know things are already there so it it, it, it can and does allow one to be somewhat immature like one's maturity today is different. This is why the laws are so complex and even to try to create some laws to protect everybody, everything today, it's, it's really crazy because there is not a, there's like a lopsided development of, 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 of the psyche. Right? Of course they say that women mature, generally speaking, in a society close to the natures or the nature Right, women generally mature sooner than, than 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 boys. Generally speaking, right? Generally speaking, women mature. You know, you know, are more serious, more serious-minded. You know, like more times, the woman would be like the virtuous woman, the strong woman, the eshet chayil that we have in Proverbs chapter thirty-one, verses ten to thirty-one. Right? Then today, now today is a whole different thing. Uh, no bra <laughs> not to ramble on that right there right but the seduction of a girl when we saw the seduction of a girl we just want to bring out what's there right who was betrothed a girl who was betrothed who was engaged to be married was punished much more severely it's like you know young young bra you know that she was supposed to marry this brother probably next year next season but you always liked her since you were small so you wanted to get a piece or something like that and you went ahead and did that well this is why we have deuteronomy 22 right 24 to 24 23 to 24 and this is what links right here where it says if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed to a husband Right, and a bring out the word husband for a moment because people be all crazy from Western Gentile, okay, the Ish to a man, okay, that's a man betrothed to a husband to a Ish, right? Not in the sense of Baal, 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 Baal is also husband, right? This is a generic word, but the other tribes like the Phoenicians and others, their high god, and some of the Canaanites, the Kanano Anu, some of their high gods they call Baal, the husband god, anyway. And a man find her in the city and lie with her, right, and lay with her, have sexual intercourse with her, then ye shall bring them both. You see what it says, both? Look at that word both. Why we point that out is because Robeno Yeshua had to deal with the woman taken in adultery, but they only brought the woman. Notice that? Remember the woman taken in adultery in the New Testament? They only brought the woman forward. This is why Yeshua knew, Robeno knew that it was, it was, it was ucked up. That these were uckers, these were, were sinners, you know, fornicators under the crown of the king, you know, because they only brought the woman. Can somebody commit adultery by themselves, with themselves? Right? So when he says, he who is without sin, you know, he who is without any error in this matter, all of them were implicated in it because they all began to recognize how wrong they were. So if a man and a woman, like in this case here, the woman's betrothed, she's engaged to be married, and a man find her and they have sexual intercourse, sexual contact and intercourse, 
right, consensual, right, then they both will be brought to the gate of the city and ye and y'all shall stone them. You see the word them? You see the word them? Them don't mean him, them don't mean her, it means him and her with stones that they die. The damsel, because it says she cried not. Now the act of crying, tsa'ak, tsa'ak, tsa'ak in the Hebrew means to shriek. It's to call out a few words, to call out, let's see how strong, strong's bringing out right and direct. Shriek, she didn't shriek, tsa'ak, she didn't shriek. Ah, you know, like she didn't, you know, because she's in the city. Remember, it talked about the context of where they are. Being in the city, right? Because if she cries out, you hear some woman crying out, like you hear a woman saying, help, 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 help me. It's very, very, what, what not, right? And, and you're there somewhere in the area, you're going to run and try to find out who is being harmed and what you can do if you are upright, right? And the man, because he have humbled, right? The word Anna, he has humbled, Right? Occupied, busied, afflicted, down, pressed, bowed down. Right? His neighbor's wife, his, his brethren's wife, thou shall put so, like this, thou shall put away evil from among you. Next reason why a lot of people are deadened to a lot of these things right here that are going on, a lot of people are kind of deadened to it. Right? They're deadened to it because um, of, of, of today's, today's world. Today's world has deadened you know, ones to what is really being said here. So they're trying to blame the Bible for the evils that they're doing, not recognize these evils were even going on before Had Torah, the direction instructions were given. Right? Right? So here it goes, you shall bring both of them out. So here in this section, there are three cases. Right? There are three cases. Let's get to that lay with the woman. Let's get to the three cases right here. Okay, if this be true, okay, let's get to that other one. With, okay, okay, let's bring this up right here. Let's bring this up. Okay, lay hold. Let's go to lay hold again. Now, we heard one say that lay hold is rape. We say that lay hold is not rape. Say that lay hold is rape. Now, how are we going to prove right here? Lay hold. It's the H8610. Lay hold. It says, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him. Right? Is that the same word right there? Or tapas, lay hold on him. Right? Lay hold on him. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her, this is rape here. The word force is the word chazak. Chazak. Not chazak. It's not chazak. It's chazak. 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 Chazak means to be strong. It means to be strong. It means to be encouraged. I can mean to be hardened, to become strong, firm. Let's go down to the Schofield. I mean, the um, not Schofield here, but the Strongs. Fast and to be strong. Right? To be strong. Right? To be strong. To be basically the rape, to force himself. Exactly as KJV brings it out. But if a man find a betrothed damsel on the field and the man force her. Force her. This is the rape one right here. This is the rape one right here. So how does the Torah deal with rape right here? The Torah says, but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her, right? We're already proving the other case of lay hold upon her in the field that if she's not engaged to be married, then the man has to dowry her, right? And he he's supposed to marry her, but the father always has the right to refuse. So we showed you Deuteronomy, and then showing some Deuteronomy means repetition of the nomos of the law, Debarim. We then showed you, you know, from the Mishnah Ha Torah, the repetition of the Torah, we showed you the Exodus earlier. So both those go together right there. Right? But here, in the man forcing her and having sex or laying with her, shakab, shakabing her, right? To shakab, to lie down, Right here, here we go, lie down. There's a sexual connection. But the word shakab can also mean just to lay down and go to sleep. So the word can mean just to lay down in that sense of when one's lay down to go to sleep. But the context is important. So what we're saying, the context of words. So the Strong's and the Blue of the Bible can help you out in a general, in the first degree. But you're going to stumble if you go too far, then you really don't get into the context of the verse. It's like taking one verse my subtext, but not seeing the context of that verse in light of the supertext, the overall narrative of what's being talked about. So the lie with her here 
connected with the four, seeing her bring what? Then the man only. Look at that. So the woman is not going to die because she was she was she was raped or because he forced her. But the man, it was says the man only. The man only that lay is still the same H seventy nine zero one that lay. It doesn't mean that okay, they just both lay down together. They just lay down together. Even though the word means to lay down. The word doesn't mean to lay down. Right, but it means to lay down in this context here. So the context here is to lay down with a sexual intent. Right? Only that lay with her shall die. The woman shall not die, but the man that lay with her, right, that lied laid sexually with her, he shall he only shall die. So here is the rape, you can say the rape verse in Ha Torah. And the punishment is the death penalty. It's a capital punishment for the man, for the man only. So we showed you a case where if a man and a woman, right, get caught up in that folly in the previous, the previous quote right there, they both of them, like if the woman's betrothed, she's going to marry somebody else, but she had a crush or the, the man, the, the Israelite man had a crush on her and they go ahead and, and sneak some shite and everything like that, then what happens? Well, they both are brought out. They both. This connects with a woman caught in adultery where Robainu, I and I rabbi, the rabbi rabbi, when he said what he said, he said about, you know, the woman caught in adultery, he who was without sin. See, that do not mean any sin generally as the counterfeit Christians say it. The context there is in this particular matter. You know, like if I'm thiefing or I'm stealing, and then if um, I point out somebody else who's stealing, it's like there was a court case, a few court cases where where somebody will bring their partner in crime to court. We went and stole something from somebody and you're supposed to split up part of the proceeds with me and you didn't split the part of the proceeds with me, so I'm gonna take you to court. There's a thing called clean hands, the clean hands doctrine, that if you don't have clean hands, you can't bring before the court something like that. So like two thieves can't bring, this is what happened to the two harlots, right? The two harlots, the two so-called whores or the harlots in the time of Shlomo HaMelech. They didn't have proper standing, but one showed that she had a heart that inclined to wisma, to hokma, to, to wiseness, the law of kindness, when she said, no, don't, don't split the baby in two, just give it to the other woman. And that's how Shlomo, Negu Solomon, right, King Solomon knew who was the one with more of the, the maternal instinct, and that's why he ruled in her favor in that court case. But here is the verse for rape. Right, the verse for rape. Now, one say the betrothed part. The, the betrothed part is a key part, whether to be married. Right, but let's do this right here, and we're gonna sum up here, and then address probably other cases. Right, case law, case law, right here. Right. So now in the Latin, the Hebrew is the word betula. Right, betula. It's unpointed there, but betula. Right, the naar, the naar. Right. The Na'ar, a maritable girl, a girl of a maritable age, right? Na'ara, Na'ara, right? A girl of maritable age and the Betula, a, 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 a woman, a, well, they have Virgo Immaculata, right? Or a virgin, immaculate, perfect, a complete virgin, right? Two or really three cases are distinguished. This is what we want to point out right here. There are two, we're using the Kyle and Delich. Right, commentary, one of the more faithful ones that we found among the Chabarim, right, and the Rastafari Yeshiva, right, we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, this is one of the ones that we use in our studies, right, to bring out some of the, the points, right, that are made in the scripture. Study to show yourself approved. I said study, study, right, two or three, really three cases are distinguished. What are three cases? One is whether she was betrothed, whether she was engaged to be married, Deuteronomy 22. 23 to 27, or not betrothed, if she was not engaged to be married, Deuteronomy 22, 28, and also verse 29. That's the first case, right? Second, if she were betrothed, if she was engaged to be married, whether it was in A, whether it was in a town, or whether it was in the open field, whether it was in the open field, that she had been violated, you see what it says? Violated by a man. And then there are the particular cases and what should be done, right? So a few of those cases, we'll get into a little more of the details on this, but just suffice to say right here that that lay hold, 
the lay hold of oh the tapas tapas let's go over here to tapas lay hold right here 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 lay hold is this the tapas only lay with her she'll die lay hold right here this is right here lay hold so this one's connected to the exodus one this is connected to the exodus one and the father the bait up right the patriarch can refuse but the man who has violated his daughter still must pay he still must pay right for his crime but she does not have to marry him though it might in an old you know old community like in the olden days it might be questionable like you know later on oh you know she was you remember so and so had laid with her and he had to pay the money but the father refused you know and and therefore maybe some young men then may not want to marry her you know whether as a first or, or so forth and so on because of that you know how people are so forth and so on but the father still has that call Though it doesn't come out in Deuteronomy, the repetition of the law, that particular verse, but from studying the Torah, we see the two are connected. Let's go to the H8610. To sum up right here of the H8610, H8610, right, lay hold. Right, there's 60 verses, lay hold. In the first case in the Bible with this particular word, which is uh, tapas, tapas, or tafas, tapas, Depends on the point, depends on the Hebrew, the Yehudi dialect, right, whether north or south, you know, like east coast, west coast dialect, we have that in the Hebrew as well. It says, and his brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all such right, as handle the harp. Handle, handle, right, so to handle the harp, does that mean to rape the harp, right, to force the harp? We already know that the word for rape is that chazak. Right? He forced her. He used force on her. He held her down. He, he forced her. Right? He, he used his, his strength right? to get what he w wanted, right? the sexual for, you know, satisfaction, so forth and so on. But here the same word, tapas, tapas is to handle the harp, right? which could be now, going back to that, he played her. He could have played her in that sense. She went along with it, which more or less speaks now to the father and the mother of the of the daughter, perhaps not raising her with that awareness of, you know, the wisdom of the ages, right? And right here it says, she caught him by his garment. Now, this is the case right here of the Memphite woman, Nomim Pata, the woman of Nomim Pata, the one with Yawasaf, right? Safnat Pa'anki, Pa'ank, right? With Joseph, right? Saying, lie with me. So here we get a woman, right? An Egyptian woman, a Kemetic woman, who is seeking to have sex with Joseph, in a sense, who's seeking to rape Joseph. And we're going to use this word rape, it can go the other way too. Because many men or males have been raped, right? By woman, by woman. All right, not by all women, of course. Don't don't stretch it out of context. But this is a case right here in Genesis 39 and 12. And she caught him by his garment, saying, "Lie with me in order to have sex with me, or uck me." She's saying to him, to Joseph, the known impata, the men fight woman, right? And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. So see how he resisted, he didn't punch her, he didn't push her, he didn't knock her down, he didn't use his male strength or whatever. But he he left his garment. Some say he might run out of there butt naked, but he ran. Right here, 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 Numbers 5, 13. And a man lie with her carnally, sexually, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband. So it doesn't mean the woman is having sex, but the husband don't know about it. And be kept close, like kept close. It's like our little secret. You know, wink, 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 wink. And she be defiled. She be defiled. The word for defiled right here, Tame. Tame, unclean or contaminated. She's contaminated. The man don't know, but she's contaminated. She's foul. That's foul right there. It's defiled right there. Right? And there be no witness against her. Nobody saw her. Nobody saw that this went on. Neither, neither she be taken. Taken with the matter. Taken, in other words, Tafas here. Is that rape? She's not raped with the matter? No, it didn't catch up with her. It didn't catch hold. It's not connected. It's like something comes out about somebody, and once you hear it about them, it's like that's connected with them. It's become like, become like a tail, right? And divide the prey into two parts between them that took the war upon themselves. Now, taking the war upon themselves is taking that responsibility, right? It's not raping the war amongst them. 
just to show how this word has its context. Here it says, and I took the two tablets. How did Moses take? Did he take it aggressively? No, he held it. He held it. He took it as his own. That's what it says, lay hold on her. She did not resist. If she resisted, then maybe he would have chazak if he was a rapist or he had that spirit in him, and then it would be that death penalty for him. Thus, different cases of sexual violations. So yes, rape is in the Bible, but rape is not justified by the Hebrew scripture. Stop your lying, your chazab, your chazab, chazbi. Stop your chazbi, your sheker, your lying. And I took the two tables and cast them out of my hands, right? And break them before your eyes. Right? And here it says, And thou besiege a city long time in making war against it to take it, to take the city, to take the city in your possession. Not to rape the city, but to take it, to lay hold on it. It is yours. Right? We understand how some ones and ones, notice the word over here, forcing. Okay, forcing is, it has a nadach, the nadach, another level of forcing. We're just going through this quickly. So now we get to this one. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out. So they lay hold, they put hand on him. You know, like a man take the take the woman by the hand, say, come, 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 come here, come on, come on, come on, come on with me, right? I've laid hold on my woman, like lay hold, grab her hand, not forcing her, no chazak there, but because she doesn't resist. See, she's not resisting it. See, it's the context of the Hebrews, the spirit. The letter of the law is, is dead, but the spirit gives life. Lay hold on him. Now notice the word bring him. Lay hold is one action, and then bring him out to the elders. Not in say force him, in say drape him up. Then we get to 22 and 28. If a man find a damsel, right, come across a damsel that is a virgin. So we have the word for damsel, right, the word na'ara. Na'ara, a damsel, woman of marriageable age. Let's go over here to virgin. She's a batula, a batula. Right? She's a Batula, right? She's separate, private, you know, she's not out there doing stuff. No, she's like a home girl, like a girl at the home. So you know nothing, you know, she she's 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 a virgin in that quote and quote. And lie with her, right? And they be found. Notice the point when it says and they be found. Because this happens, and no doubt it has happened, but they were not found. Notice what it says, like what it said about the woman who steps out from her husband having sex, but the thing be close and it doesn't, it's not found out, right? It's not found out, right? So the word, um, the word for rape is that idea of force, not just lay hold. I, I lay hold on my phone. I'm holding the phone. I lay hold on my woman's hand. My, or I can lay hold on one like that. But you see, we're going to show you as we go further, you can see the sense of laying hold with force. See the force. It's like if he basically encourages her, that's why the first example of the lay hold, the tapas there is with the harp, right? And the harp, you play the harp. You know, like like a man give a woman a good chat, like he chat her up. Yeah, so and so, yo, you so pretty, so forth and so on. You a righteous daughter. So hey, hey, come here, come here, come come come, come with me. And he and he holds her by the hand. He lay hold on her, and he encourages her to go his way. He don't have to force her. She is willing to go with him. This is why this particular um, law or statute. This is why this is brought out like this. So yes, rape is in the Bible, but rape is not. That force idea, forcing yourself. Now, as far as the one that some people get twisted on, right, about, um, ab about the woman, the woman in the, what you call them, the woman in the, um, what you call it, the woman in, you know, the, the, the prisoners of war of these other enemy nations, right? That's very gracious right there. And we touched on it before, but we'll touch on it again, not to get it twisted up with that right there, there, there. Right, but that whole idea of force, right? That whole idea of force, right? You know, that whole idea took a god, right? He took him alive. Look right here, and he took a god, the king of the Amalekites, alive, right? Right, and utterly destroyed all the people. But he was able to destroy, force himself on a god to kill him, but he didn't, right? Right, um, and his men round about to take them, right? To take them, and caught the new garment. I, you know, like I caught up, like I, I catch up with you later. I catch up with you later, right? I'm going to take hold. I took hold on her, 
right? I, I wanted her to be mine. The context is very important, right? Lay hold on him, right? And his hand, so forth and so on. So it can, right, take the prophets, right? Take them, right? Don't let one of them escape. That means lay hand on them, but for what purpose? For what purpose and how? So rape is not, right, justified by the scripture. That's just one of those modern day sayings right those hearsays heresies that you hear people say because they haven't studied the scripture you know they may read well but they don't really understand understand the spirit of the hebrew well enough so rape is in the bible the good the bad the ugly is in the bible right and we see through ha torah right the principles of righteous judgment right while dealing with a real people real people things remember the people were doing a lot of these things before there was the direction instructions to help to regulate the wildness of the people of the children of israel being infected by you know the egyptians and others being in their society as well but that's a whole other point a point aside brothers and sisters sisters and brothers we're going to pause right here for the cause as we go forward 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 we're going to deal with some of the science the science of the scripture as we're dealing with the science linguistically of the Hebrew so stay tuned check out the descripts as well check us out on the podcast as well check us out lojs.org yes I Rastafari Shalom Chabarim Shalom Shabbat Shalom Sembet Salam yes I Tenayin Sterling